I probably just did the worst how-to I've ever done, so <laughs> I axed it. Um, this is uh, an overview. I mean, that last video you saw pretty much the top of my hat for about 90% of the video, and that's just wrong. What I did, these are the... Um, the pools that I asked you guys about, and you guys said, blood, we want blood. So what I did was I took a sharp brush, and I used a True Red Americana, and I used a sharp brush, and I painted down in those grooves. Then what I did is I painted all the way down into the grooves, down to the base of where the water is. And I started off with a lot of, of paint, and then I wet the brush and I drew it out, okay? And then what it does is it fades into that blue, okay? It's still kind of wet. You can kind of see the sheen there a little bit. Um, and uh, it's really, it's no big deal. And then if, if you get too much of a fade between where the paint is and where the water is, just grab some more paint, go back to the point where the blood's entering the water, and put it there and then draw it back out into the water and you'll get a nice faded effect okay um and then uh i'm gonna gloss coat all this stuff uh later here's some uh gloss interior varnish from delta cream coat and this works really well um the main thing that you want to make sure is that you shake it up really well and you don't want to put it on too thick because you tend to get kind of a, a foggy haze as long as you keep the coat thin you're fine um okay let's go check out um this is going to be uh the base of the tower and then um i'm obviously going to put a, a floor plate on that and this is going to be the uh, top that's going to be mounted around that. Um, I've got to go out and I've got to pick up some more um, stonework. Um, I'm going to be using a, uh, a dragon theme for, the, uh, for this blood bowl. And um, so I cut out... Uh, one of the dragon drawings that I made uh, a while back and I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to use it if it's going to be like a floor uh, you know like the scoreboard or if it's going to be like uh, you know have some doors walking into the stadium or, or what it's going to be exactly but um, I'm going to try and utilize this in the uh, in the format of the um, of the uh, stadium so, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, oh. Let's talk about things people hate to talk about. We all want to be omnipotent. We all want to be perfect and never make any mistakes. But you know what? If you don't make any mistakes, you never learn anything. And... You don't get to build cool stuff later on. Case in point, I uh, I made a mistake. Um, one of these is cut just a little bit too short, and I had to cut another whole one out to uh, to make it work. So now I've got these two extra pieces. Now, some people might say, "Well, those are scrap. You throw them away." Uh uh. What's Bill's rule of thumb? Besides giving respect where respect is due, never throw anything away. I see a really long bridge, possibly going out in the middle of a lake with a big, huge tower keep on it or something. But I mean, wouldn't that make just an awesome bridge? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I can build an entire table based on an idea that I got out of two scrap pieces okay so that's that's how I want you guys to think um, because um, 
this is all trial and error. It's and it's just letting your imagination run wild. Um, case in point. Case in point. Um, we went over like Bill's budget terrain the other day. Um, found something else that's interesting. Can't remember what the heck it was. Threw it off to the side because it looked kind of interesting. Um, you've got this shape here. Okay. And you've got, you know, that shape there. Now there's no reason you can't take a razor knife, cut this in half, nip off these little tabs so that it sits flat, and just black bomb it. Maybe do some lighting effects on it. Go into your bits box. Find some really interesting bits and, like, you know, mount them on there. You know, check your glue to make sure your glue doesn't melt this. But, I mean, there's so many things you can do. Like I said, Dormicon, and I guess it's Dale that does the train for Dormicon. But, I mean, um, Dormicon and Dale, those guys really, um, they amaze me. They, they will not be denied, <laughs> you know, they're going to have something to play around. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm trying to make a living by making quality terrain, but I mean, that doesn't mean, you know, if you're a 13-year-old kid in the UK or the United States and you want to play, you know, look at your mom's garbage can. Look at your, you know, when you walk home from school, you know, take a look around, you know, um... Besides being able to find maybe a quarter, you know, or a dime or a nickel on the ground, you know, you might find some really just interesting bits. You know, shove them in your pocket, go home, take them out, throw them in your bits box. You know, and then you too can have umpteen gazillion billion <laughs> pieces of junk just like me. Um, so, but, um, something else I wanted to bring up, um... With all these different how-tos and whatnot, um, they're starting to kind of pile up around here. And if you haven't noticed, room is at a premium. I'm thinking about um, throwing up uh, my tutorial pieces um, up on eBay. Um, and I just want some input from you guys. Do you think that's, that's a waste of time? Or do you think that you guys would actually be interested um, in, in getting something like that? Because... Um, you know, I, I love experimenting, love doing fun, cool things, um, and teaching you guys, but um, I'm not always certain if it's, you know, if people would be interested in it. Um, actually, on that point, I didn't even think of this, um, I've had a couple of people asking about this, and I am I was really surprised at how much um, attention it got. Um would you chaos players be interested if I did like a like a warped brick city, you know, village? You know, like chaos went walking through a village and um as they passed, you know, the power of chaos, I guess it needs to flow with them and the more it's condensed in an area, the more it warps the reality of that area. So, I got thinking, I thought it would be kind of fun to do something almost like um, like a Beetlejuice kind of thing. You remember how they kind of warped things in the movie and it made it kind of kind of cool and interesting. I'm thinking about doing something like that. So if you guys um, are interested in like a, a a chaotic or warped reality kind of uh, terrain like that, let me know. Um, and um, you know, as, as I end up waiting for things, um, I'll mess around with it and, um, and uh, I'll show them to you guys and, and, you know, if there's a calling for it, maybe I'll put it in the store. So, um, once again, oh, another thing, um, another thing that the wife got at um, McDonald's. Remember that, uh, that dinosaur? This is an Easter Island stone face. This screams screams lizard man now it's got some goofy stuff on it you know it's got all this crap on the back and it's got that big ugly slot there okay that's why you've got your lichen that's why you got your plants that's why you got all your stuff um this would be perfect for a wash too look at the 
at the detail level on that. You could just hit that with a wash because the stone color is almost right. So, um, like I said, always, always, always keep your eyes open. Um, and um, let me know if you like it, lump it, um, and uh, I'll try and get another one out today. Uh, I, I was up way late due to thunderstorms. I'm, I live in the Chicago area, about an hour north of Chicago, and I mean, the thunderstorms are still going. So, um, you guys have a great Friday. I hope it's awesome. I'm going to put up another vid lady later, and hopefully I'll have everything done. Uh, take care, everybody. Love you guys. Have a great, great weekend.